uh, I want to start by um, asking uh, each of you what in your own personal experience took you to this subject? And we have a small uh, foundation that's been very effective in Africa that we began while uh, the both of us were filming a movie called Gorillas in the Mist. I think a lot of people in this audience are too young <laughs> to have seen it. But <laughs> <clears throat> but I produced it, and Simon did all of the extraordinary photography in that of, of, of the, the animals as he did in Out of Africa. So, you know, um, and we got together at that point and decided that we wanted to form a foundation. It was Simon's idea um, that would deal with conservation for the Africans. And um, all the films that you see are in... Uh, are for Western consumption. We produce our films in African dialects, and uh, the hope is that we create some kind of economic independence through conservation. So we've made uh, 28 films and a television series uh, on subjects as far ranging as uh, trawling off the coast of uh, Mombasa, which is an enormous problem. Every Every trawler kills nine tons of fish a day while trying to trawl for shrimp. So you have this incredible waste. That's each boat. It was incredible waste. People at the shore can't get uh, the fish, and small markets can't, can't make a living. And partially, maybe even largely, because of our film, um, Kenya was the first uh, country in the world to put an indefinite ban on trawling 16 miles offshore. So this is the kind of thing we do. We're a very small organization, and um, but we are the largest um, um, disseminator of uh, free conservation material in all of Africa, more than um, uh, National Geographic. So, Simon is constantly finding these movies, these subjects that are urgent. And um, we, about two and a half years ago, a little bit more, we started um, to plan this film on the ivory trade. And as the more we worked on it, the more horrible it was, and the more convinced we were to bring this to the world. So this is the first film that we've made specifically for international distribution and specifically for China. So in April, we will start um, a campaign uh, through China showing this film, through uh, Japan, Malaysia, uh, Singapore, and ignite the conscience of the Chinese, inform the Chinese as to what's happening and hopefully this film is going to make a difference and stop the consumption of ivory, or, or at least curtail it. So that's a little bit about how this happened. I think really what Arnie says is right, is that we, Ian and I, we live on the front line. We live right there where the elephants are and where the poachers are 20, uh, 12, 12 months a year. So. We're right on the, on, on the spot all the time. So I think that gives us a big advantage to really show the reality. The reality is something that's very difficult for people, say, in New York, to look at. And in fact, what you saw today was a toned-down version of the reality. I couldn't show you what was really happening. Let's... Um, you realize that in 50 years that I've lived there, I've seen 40,000 elephants die. Since 1979 in Africa, 900,000 elephants have died for the ivory trade. So you can't show that, can you? So that's what it's really like. Now, <coughs> I just want to say I'm really aware that being here in this building today is a great honor because many very, very famous filmmakers have stood here and shown films. And it's a great honor for somebody from Africa to be here. 
And I would just like to say that a great film editor, uh, Walter Murch, is that right? Was that his name? Yes, Walter Murch. He said the most important thing in filmmaking, even above the story, is emotion. So emotion can actually be shown in filmmaking in many ways. It can be shown by the uh, subject. It can be shown by the passion of the filmmaker for his subject. And so I'd just like to recount one episode in my life which happened a few years back, which I actually recounted the other evening at the premiere. I live in the Sava National Park, and I have a house there. And just about as far as you are, the elephants come and drink from a small water hole right next to the, to the house. And one day I saw this herd of elephants coming, and a particular elephant detached herself from the group <coughs> and came walking up to the house. And on, on my veranda, I had about 12 people standing there. She walked straight up. Now, that's a full-grown elephant. She could have killed us with one swipe of her trunk. And don't forget, she'd seen her families or relatives, anyhow, killed over the years. She came straight up. She put her trunk through between the people and took hold of a woman's wrist right standing at the back. And she pulled back, shook her head, and went back to the other elephants. That woman was wearing a 50-year-old ivory bracelet. Now, how, how does science deal with that one? That's emotion. That's why I make films about elephants. Thank you. Can you elaborate um, uh, on, on what you hope the film can accomplish? One of the most important things for me personally, is, is the power of film and what we can use film for. Um, I, I became a, involved in filmmaking almost by mistake. I, I was a anti-poaching and wildlife protection and counter-terrorism officer, and I found myself in this industry. So, but the main thing is, is that I, I think, and Simon's brought it out, by, by, by using emotion, you can change people's attitudes. And that's what we want to do in China. One of the things in China is that the ivory trade isn't high enough on the government's radar. We want to change that. And I think just to, to quote one of, um, one of probably the United States' most famous newsman, Edward R. Murrow, when he, taught, he, he, he was speaking about the medium of film and television. And he asked, what can this medium do? Can it do more than just insulate and entertain? Yes, it can. It can educate it can influence, and it can even inspire, but only as much as we as humans want it to do so. And that, those, those lines have always stuck in my mind. And he also said that we can use it as a weapon. And in the, and, 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 and in the words of Stonewall Jackson, when you take away your, draw your sword and throw away the scabbard, well, we've just taken this film out of its scabbard and we're taking it to China. Because if we don't, and we don't get it right, in seven to 10 years, there won't be a single elephant left in Africa. And to me, that's inconceivable and, uh, and something we just really cannot accept. First, I'd like to say that, you know, this is, this is not a film crew that's flown in by some organization to make a movie uh, and all of the movies that are made on elephants and wildlife are, are beneficial. But this is, a, this is a film crew that lives there, that is on the ground. And, uh, you know, when Simon is photographing these elephants from their toenails looking up, it's, it's pretty danger <laughs> dangerous. But when we, um, when we distribute these films, we can take these films to remote villages with a generator, uh, in a school or, as he says, on a sheet between two trees, and people will walk for hours and hours to come and see the films. 
And um, somewhere in the, those viewers is a nine-year-old kid who's going to be the next Minister of the Interior. And that's what we're aiming at. That's really what we're about. We're about changing attitudes and policies and creating a kind of possibility of economic independence through conservation. I'm very grateful to Ian and Simon for visiting us from Africa and to Arnie for bringing us this film. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tom.